Hey guys, Brian Grossman here with the National Deer Association. Just wrapping up a three day public land deer hunt here in Georgia. And man, despite countless hours of postseason scouting last year and summer scouting, running trail cameras, man, these deer absolutely kicked my tail on this hunt. Uh, did not see a deer from a deer stand. That, that's, that's pretty embarrassing right there. Uh, in spots that, you know, have produced for me in the past. So I really, at, at this point in the game, I'm going to continue to hunt this particular tract of land, but I'm kind of left with two options. You know, I can do number one, something that I did way too often in the past, and I can just keep hunting these spots that I had picked out going into the season and hope that something eventually walks by. It's what legendary bow hunter Warren Womack calls the hanging hope. Uh, and, and you should never hang in hope. He says you should always hang and expect. And, you know, expect to kill. Expect to see deer. Expect to kill a deer. Uh, and the only way that you're going to be able to do that with confidence is, is option number two. And that's get out there right now. Set aside some of your hunting time. I know we all hate to give up any kind of hunting time. We want to be in the stand. We want to be actively hunting. But sometimes you're better off uh, to put that aside, burn a little boot leather, and get out there and do some in-season scouting. You're looking for what a lot of guys call that MRS, that most recent sign that tells you, hey, deer are actively using this area now. Not, you know, they weren't using it last month. They weren't using it last year. The deer are in here now. And that's the kind of places you want to hunt. You want to hunt where you know the deer are actively using. And the way to do that is with in-season scouting. Now, what I'm specifically looking for when I do my in-season scouting is going to be dependent on what time of year it is. Now, it's mid-October here in Georgia, and so that means the deer, even though the rut is approaching, we're starting to see some scrapes, that kind of stuff, but they're pretty food-focused still at this point. And so I'm concentrating on trying to find those hot food sources. And for, for me, hunting public land, not a, lot of ag around, not a lot of agriculture around here, I'm focused primarily on oaks at this point and, and those acorns that the deer are feeding on. And so sometimes you got to get out there and burn a lot of boot leather, look at a lot of oak trees to find that one that just really screams, hey, this is where you need to hunt. Um, just because, you know, maybe there's a little bit of droppings, maybe there's a few acorn caps laying around uh, that certainly tells you a deer is fed there, but you're wanting, you're wanting that abundance of sign. Uh, the leaves churned up underneath the tree, lots of droppings. Lots of acorn caps laying around, busted acorns, all the things to tell you, hey, the deer are really concentrating on this tree. And keep in mind that they may not be concentrated on that tree for long. You know, they, they have a tendency to move from, from tree to tree, uh, depending on, you know, when they're dropping and which trees, you know, for whatever reason, deer seem to have a preference to certain trees. So you get out there, look for that most recent sign. It may not be acorns where you're at. It may be crop fields. Um, it may be uh, browse, woody browse, green vegetation, a lot of different things that deer feed on, but the, the, the technique is still the same. Get out there, find that abundance of sign that tells you the deer are actively using that area. Now, here in the next week, the next two weeks, uh, things are going to be transitioning. Uh, the bucks are going to be a lot more focused on where the does are. Of course, the does will still be food focused, but I'm going to be looking for more fresh rut sign at that point. I'm going to be looking for those fresh scrapes, those fresh rubs, um, fresh tracks. Of course, the big tracks, you know, that might indicate it's a buck. Uh, but all those things that tell me, hey, deer are actively using this area. Bucks are actively using this area. Uh, I'm going to be looking for those doe bedding areas that the bucks may be concentrated on. in any kind of terrain or, or habitat pinch points or funnels, the, that may concentrate these the buck movement as they're out there searching for these does. So, again, most recent sign. Then, as you train, as we transition into the late season, uh, you know we're going to go right back to that food focus. And, and of course, it's going to be uh, different foods at that point. Although, you know, I'll still be I'll be looking for those red oaks that may still have some acorns on the ground available for these deer. Those can be a great late season food source. Any kind of green browse, uh, green briar honeysuckle, anything that, uh, again, it's green growing late in the season could, is a potential deer food, woody browse, or of course, if you're in an area with agriculture uh, or food plots, any kind of green field or grain field that may have leftover grain, uh, you know, could be 
a, a great late season spot. So guys, again, if you're at this point in the season, if you're not getting the results you want, you're not seeing the deer you're after, change things up, man. Don't hang and hope. Get out there, find that most recent sign, find where those deer are actively using and hang and expect, hang and expect to kill that deer. Uh, guys, for more great deer hunting and deer management information, be sure to check out our website at deerassociation.com. And hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel so you never miss another one of our videos.